morning and welcome to MS4 and today I am trying all the new little bits and bobs of makeup that I've picked up. Um, things have been very busy recently so a lot of the things I've been trying to kind of piecemeal um, and this time I'm gonna just take and put it all on my face. Uh, well maybe not all, I've got a lot of blushes um, apparently. Uh, the blush bug got me pretty hard so anyway gonna remove the spectacles and we're gonna try out some things. Um, the first thing uh, I'm gonna be trying out, I got a, a deluxe sample of the YSL, the um, Touche Club Blur Primer. Um, so we're gonna put that on the face. This is gonna be the first time I'm trying this. Um, so this is all new. Clear and a little sparkly, and I don't know how much is too much. So we're just gonna put that there and then work it around and see how it goes. Um, very slippy. Uh, lightly fragranced, but not bad. Um, yeah, very slippy. But it feels nice so far. Um, we'll see how it goes. The Touche Claw, the uh, brightening pen is old school, uh, but very nice. And then they have a concealer in that same format of the, the clicky pen with the brush uh, applicator. Um, so far so good. This feels very nice. Um, and we'll see if we think it blurs. Um, we're also going to be trying out new. Got a sample of the Eternité, Bu Eternité de Beauté. Um, this is 220W. Um, and everybody is saying this kind of oxidizes on them. It's got a little baby pump. Um, I got both of these samples through Sephora. So we're going to do out a pump. And it is definitely fragranced. Um, I may be taking a shower after this if the fragrance does not dissipate on this one. I don't love it as much. It's definitely floral with a little bit of herbal behind it, but you're mostly getting the floral. And I have a little harder time with that, with like the floral fragrancing than the YSL primer. Okay, so we'll see after this, whether we feel like this ends up being a good color match. Because it was a sample, um, we were limited in the number of, of colors that we could choose from. So that's 220W. Um, now, I am working on um, I got a couple of different things from QVC. Uh, I've been wanting to try, they had some eye products that came out. Um, this is the eye, uh, so it's it's a lot like the Peter Thomas Roth concept, like a, a firming eye, but it's meant to be not just a couple hours, but it's meant to be all day. Um, and then I also got the concealer um, to try out. Uh, it Cosmetics makes my one of my favorite eye creams, um, so I was interested in tr doing this one. Um, it's one that you're not supposed to make any sort of facial movement for about 15 minutes um, after you use it. There is kind of a white cast, but I tried to put this over the top of it uh, the other day, and it didn't look great with this on top of this, so we're gonna just set this to the side today, um, but I will be giving some thoughts on this later. Um, it definitely does what it says. It really smooths out things and you do need to be, don't be smiling with it because it's like cement cracking kind of. But if you wait and you're patient um, and then you do your makeup, it really is a pretty effect. Um, but it's one of the few things that they have instructions, like you need to remove it and not wear it to bed. Um, and you need to use like a biphase or an oil-based cleanser for this guy. So anyway, um, it is the Bye Bye Under Eye Bags um, and it's, pretty serious. Um, not that it doesn't work, but it's pretty serious and then you just really have to make sure you're not moving your face for a while. Um, and then the concealer. I'm not really a concealer girl in a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of times where I just don't use a concealer because I don't like how it affects my under eyes. Um, case in point, this is a corrector. This is Ola Hendrickson. Um, this is very thick and it didn't really dissolve down, you know, settle into my eyes and just make 
it made my under eye area look very thick and very crepey and like it was not a good look. So with the Ola Hendrickson, I would not, um, if you have any sort of texturization, um, I would not use this. It's, it's a fairly hefty sort of a, a thing. So I'm going to be passing this one on. Um, so today we're just going to do, um, some of the, the it cosmetics, um, the foundation not foundation but the the concealer um, it's a doe foot and then it has a little blending brushy thing on the end of it I don't know if you can really see that but a lot of people have been using it I just want to try and use it by itself and not with the depuffer my eyes have been puffy lately uh, air quality not being great um, here in Los Angeles, we're not getting like the, the apocalyptic skies like uh, up in the Northeast um, from the Canada fires. Um, it's just that it's getting to be, you know, summer here. And we've got things blooming. And I got the new puppy dog. And um, usually I am not allergic to pet dander. Um, I'm only allergic to what she rolls in. So if she, she goes exploring a, a bush of some kind that uh, has flowers that I'm allergic to, then that would be usually what I respond to. Um, but she's doing good otherwise. Uh, like I had said, I think the last time I'm the weakest link. My bladder is the one that like can't make it through things. Hers is fine. She sleeps through the night. She only gets up when I get up. Um, which if I'm getting up a lot, then she's getting up a lot. Uh, but other than that, it's going pretty well. Um, We went to a graduation picnic yesterday and she did really, really well. Uh, she's still shy around people. And she doesn't bark except for when she's barked at. If a dog barks at her, then she'll bark back. Uh, but other than that, it's been pretty good. Okay, we're just gonna leave that there. I feel like it's gonna end up looking very bright compared to my other makeup, um, just because that foundation, I think, is, is a little different coloring than what we're going for. Okay, now cheeks. I'm going to put my glasses back on while I go through the cheek business um, that I've been trying out. Because I don't think, I really wanted to do a dedicated video just to the blushes that I've picked up. Um, you saw the Lawless, um, I did the Lawless the Watermelon uh, collection. So you've seen this bad boy. Um, and then I also had picked up uh, from Sigma a cream blush in, uh, where is this? No, this is my, sorry, this is my, my bronzer. <laughs> okay, so that's my, my Sigma bronzer. Um, and then that would make this Pashmina, my, my Sigma cream blush. Um, okay, so this was the Sigma cream blush. You guys saw the, the, uh, Lawless. So there's the Sigma Pashmina. Um, this is a really nice cream blush. Uh, Pashmina is a great color. That's Pashmina. Um, and then I also picked up, as far as blushes go, uh, the the NARS Dolce Vita. Uh, this is this feels more like skincare. Um, you get that light wash of color kind of sets in. It's not overly sticky, but it is just a little bit emollient. So you have that feel, like it just feels like skincare. Um, the packages are all the same color. And I didn't blend this out, but I'll show you just the swatch and then I'll blend it. So that's Dolce Vita on this side. Okay, and then we'll blend it in some. So I think if you think of this one as more like skincare, it has a lighter read of, of color to it, but it does stay put. Um, most of these things get about a nine hour wear test with me and it did, did all right um, in that framework. Uh, we had the, the Huda Beauty, this is the lip and cheek stain. Um, and what color did I get? That is a good question. Um, I got the Coral Kiss with this one. 
Um, the coral and the apricot look a little bit alike. There's a coral, apricot, and peach, um, but this tone looked a little different. Um, we've seen, I think it was Amanda at Makeup Just for Fun that swatched all of these guys. And this one just seemed to be kind of the, the tone I was most attracted to. Even though they were kind of same, they were different enough. And this gives you just kind of a matte on the lip, um, but it doesn't feel dry. Um, which is nice, but it's just a very matte wash color. And then this will dry down. It's not completely powdery finish, but it's just about like, it's very, like it'll dry pretty well and not, not overly dry, but just nicely. So this is a really good formulation if you're just wanting that light uh, kind of matte read of things and just really pretty on the lips and the cheeks. Um, I'm not always excited about both lip and cheeks and then I did pick up from Fenty um, the packaging definitely did it for me the sort of summer look and the product when you look at this or the Sun it's clear it's like one of those clear glue sticks but it has just the color so it kind of is interesting that way being clear um, and this one both of these are supposed to be let me do it over here uh, pH because I got the the lip thing too um I was tentative about the whole pH changing thing um the only thing is and this this will settle in it is also kind of in that emollient phase it's not quite like the other Fenty where it goes to a powder pretty quickly but this is more in that emollient sort of phase but it does give you a little bit of color um I don't find that some of the some of the color changing from pH just turned bright orange on me. Um, I don't know why, if that means that I'm overly acidic <laughs> or very base, I'm a basic B. Um, but anyway, a lot of times that'll go, go strictly orange. Uh, but this one actually looks pretty good as far as just having a nice color. It doesn't get explosively orange um, and it settles in and it, we it wears really nicely too, but it is like I say, that kind of emollient light wash of color. So you can see on most of these, like probably, uh, probably the Dolce Vita is the, the most pigmented, but they're all in that kind of light wash of, of nice color. Um, so I think we're going to do this bad boy because um, I want to do some of the, the lip and cheek. Um, I did also pick up the Bare Minerals Blonzer. So this is a different formulation, so it's not cream or liquid or any of that. This is a regular powder. Um, and the, the Blonzers were doing, you know, they had just the, the three colors and they came out with two more. Um, the other one looks more like a bronzer, an actual bronzer. It's in that kind of tan color. And I had thought about picking it up, but then I I've kind of realized I don't really like sparkly bronzers. Um, you know, I like a matte bronzer. So this, this is a little, I'm gonna swatch it on my other hand so we're not getting it mixed up. So this, and that's a, a heavy swatch, but that's kind of what we're looking at. So maybe, Maybe we'll do that actually today, um, since I have a, a a bronzer here in my Sigma that I didn't realize I'd picked up, and I dropped the brush. <laughs> it's one of those mornings, um, just one of those mornings. Okay, so I'm gonna put on my my Sigma bronzer real quick, taking off my spectacles again. Finding my mirror. Now this is what I was saying, I like a matte bronzer. And I like the Sigma formula, it's nice. All their, their powder stuff's pretty nice. And a 
we'll go in with the the bronzer and this is kiss of mauve is what the name of it is the bare minerals bronzer and these always surprise me because i don't really i've never necessarily been a, a huge fan of of sparkly blushes i prefer to do matte blush and bronzer and then add highlighter specifically where I want it to but there's something about these um, that I really like and it makes me happy to be having things from Bare Minerals that I like because a lot of their other makeup lately has not necessarily been very exciting for me um, and I like the brand I like you know about what their mission is and how they were kind of one of the first group to get started with the the natural powder you know, mineral foundation. Um, maybe we'll go ahead and just put a little bit of this on the, just to have fun. Uh, I've got my, and I'm just, and you see that just pumped up the color. taking it a little higher on the the cheeks because you're gonna get just a little bit of not sparkly read to it but just emollient read to it so it'll be a little bit light reflecting but then you're gonna get the the color and you can see you can build up that color pretty pretty effectively even though it is like when you just put on a little bit of it it's that light wash of color okay all right so there's that now as far as the eye look um, and that's the, the packaging again, what the, this one looks like. Um, and I did, like I said, I did pick up the, the lip stain. I love the Fendi Pouncicle lip stains. Um, I want to do, uh, the, uh, Okavango, Okavango, the Nomad palette today. That's the little thing that it came with. Um, let me put my spectacles back on and I'll show you the packaging with this. Um, So it comes in the outer packaging like this, very pretty, you can see the gold detail. Um, and then the interior packaging, I, I'm not sure whether I want to keep the exterior packaging, usually I don't, uh, and you can see the when you open it, it's like that. And then when you pull it out, you've got this, and it's kind of that fabric-y, like if you have the shoes that are the... Uh, the calf kind of trying feeling that way even though that's this is not this is just fun fabric packaging but anyway it's got the gold the gold details on the back um, but if you want to keep the other one um, that has all of the the information for it um, but this is this is the palette um, I've loved the Nomad the matte shades um, I'm excited to try out the the shimmers in this and they have the they've made it kind of like the animal striping for it and you would just end up you know rubbing them together and it's kind of more like that super shock sort of formula um, that ColourPop has uh, but today just knocking stuff over it's okay um, I think what I want to do um, I want to try and build up because like these these colors here are always speaking to me, um, so I think I want to do like a very chocolatey shade, and then layer some of the uh, Nile Crocodile on top of that. Um, so that's where we're going. Um, I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this palette. Um, it was one of those things that uh, I was kind of just the the basic packaging of it was attractive to me because I love this whole animal print. I'm trying not to be like a bougie Peggy Bundy, like Charlotte Tilbury, you know, dressing like that. Um, but I like having it like I'm trying to get to a fashion sense when it's like I'm accessorizing with small animal print. I'm trying. Uh, anyway, so I'm just trying to build up the this kind of chocolate cocoa looking color.
and it is called uh, Honking Hippos. And it was very funny. So my partner uh, fell down a rabbit hole about hippos and he didn't realize how, cause he was watching one of the African safari sort of things and they were chasing, they were being chased by a hippo and the hippo was chasing them through the water and they were on a boat and the hippo was beating them. And so he fell down this hole finding out because everybody thinks, you know, hippos are cute, they're sweet. You know, like I went to the zoo and I watched them get fed, you know, like a whole bucket full of vegetables just kind of getting crammed down their, their throat. Um, they were liking that, by the way, that was not a bad thing. Um, but the fact that they are so territorial, um, they're super fast. Like, it's kind of like with alligators too. People look at that and they look, you know, like they're just basking in the sun and then they go after somebody and their land speed is really fast. Um, and if they're in the water, they go down and bounce off the bottoms of things and then bounce up and they're, they were overtaking a speedboat in this particular video. So anyway, like I always think of the, in the, the post office commercial where the little kid is, you know, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas and it's so cute, you know, you have all the, the cuteness. And then of course at the end, you know, she sees something else and is distracted. Um, but I never knew that they were such dangerous creatures. So anyway, I'm going to go in with the mighty Buffalo the next overshade that's the, and I'm gonna just use my finger, I think for this one. But anyway, so it's like the learning channel, except for what's my partner's fault. So he fell down a rabbit hole and then thus needed to share with me the rabbit hole. So hippos, who knew? There's probably a lot of you out there who knew that already. But I, I did not. So the mighty buffalo is going on my eyes. And I love how rich this is. It's just beautiful. Okay. All right, I'm gonna clean off my finger because then I'm gonna be going into the Nile crocodiles. Um, but these are just really gorgeous shadows and for the most part, I only myself own the one other Nomad palette, uh, but I really like it. It was a Hudson Valley palette, that fallish sort of one. Um, and so when when this one came up, I know it's it's all it's neutral, but that you know, I, I vacillate between wanting very colorful and wanting the neutral looks. So, okay, so we're going in for Nile Crocodile, and again, as I rub it together, it's just like a single shade even though it had the the kind of spotted look to it. Um, so we're gonna go with the finger into the interior. And I'm trying to get it to blend in with the, the mighty buffalo there. And if you wanted a lighter, like a lighter corner, you could do the zebra looking one which is the migrating zebras. But I'm kind of wanting to stay in this more, more muted chocolatey tones. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking this. Um, trying to blend a little with my finger. Okay, I'm gonna apply some mascara and then we'll do lips. Uh, today, the I kind of wanted the eyes to be really more of the star of the show. Um, I did get the the Fenty in fuchsia, the fuchsia color uh, that went with this. There were two of the pouticles um, that went with this this packaging, um, and were kind of trying to be a little pH. I don't feel like the, the pout sickle itself did any sort of changing. Um, it was a great lip stain, great color, uh, but it's very vibrant because it's the, the two shades were like a berry and a fuchsia. Um, and I love that, but like this, this I want just the, 
the eye is to be more of the star of the show. So we're gonna do the, the hoot of the coral. Um, but let me get some mascara in here. And then we'll come back. Let me put it down. <laughs> Trying to apply mascara while you're holding all sorts of things is probably not, not a great idea. Um, so anyway, the what we're doing lately, I still am, am purchasing makeup, but being able to, to shoot video of it for dedicated videos is a little harder. Um, so I'm just kind of enjoying it and then filming when I can. Uh, my partner and I have also been doing a little thought experiment. Uh, we finished Ted Lasso season three and we've been talking about how because some of it was really satisfying and some of it was not and so we started thinking about if we were rewriting it like if we were rewriting season three um, how we would do that what would be satisfying to us what were things that were really big emotional events that we did not see on screen we just kind of saw the after effects of things and we didn't see how they actually happened so really kind of that's where our core of thinking is, is what are the, the scenes that were off screen that really needed to be on screen? Um, I'm not gonna ruin it for anybody in case people still haven't watched it, but. Okay, so we're going back in with the lips, the coral kiss. I'm gonna put my glasses back on, my spectacles, so I can see what I'm doing. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So again, this is a, a matte lip color, um, but it's it's, not dry feeling like it feels pretty good for a goodly amount of time um i'd say you know you probably will reapply it just for the feeling of things um to get that more emollient feeling back um but it's really nice so I, i've been surprised about this this is one that i actually have considered i've considered picking up another color in this one in the huda and another color in the the nars um but i'm not sure i have like i said i have a lot of makeup right now that's needing to be needing to see about and um, this does have a, a nice vanilla you know bakery kind of scent and I did I did pick up a lip liner from Huda and um, I picked up pinky brown um, but it's not one that I really see the effects of but it's one that probably if I were wanting to have a uh, a more definitive like space to apply things um, I could do that uh, with that liner um, also it's not as much with this one but the the Fenty the um, lip stain is pretty bright and it's very thin um, this is not as thin uh, and this you can just take your applicator along your lip line but this product feels more like has more body to it it's not as wet like the the Fenty is really really feels like water at first and then kind of gets some body to it this one has the same sort of body as you go but anyway it smells really nice and it looks really nice and it's just a very soft even with this color the coral kiss there you know you can get a darker color but that matte is just a really soft, pretty. Um, okay, so that's the look. Um, I can still kind of smell some of the, the Gucci, the uh, foundation. Um, I did get a, a little sample pack of one of the other, um, uh, no, so I got the, the Givenchy uh, in my order, um, and I got a, the Huda, concealer uh, from Sephora for the cards so that's something that I could try but with the the uh, this is a, a really good sample size so I should be able to tell a lot about what I feel about it um, multiple wears out of it um, when you get the cards it's just kind of a single kind of a single application if that uh, but this one is going to give me a good chance to try this out uh, as I go so anyway let me get a little closer. Don't panic.
as you can see kind of where the the Fenty cheek product is so but that'll kind of all I feel like this will all kind of mellow out and I could powder the whole thing that's probably what I would do it's not it's not sticky really it's got just a little bit of tiny tiny bit of tack emollients just as if I'd put on a nice a nice cream of some sort um, but I I'm really enjoying all my cheek products I don't believe I've had a, a fail yet um, and that's really exciting because there's a lot of times where it's like one of them fails but the the Sigma cream blush um, in Pashmina has been lovely um, the Fenty stick really nice um, the Dolce Vita the NARS and the Huda both really good like I said this is more, this feels a little more like skincare this isn't that matte kind of goes to a powder sort of a finish but I like them both and then the the bronzer in the new kiss of mauve um, so I feel like I've really I've really lucked out with all of the the cheek products or the the lip and cheek products um, and like I said I don't I don't need four billion of these but I am thinking possibly about picking up one more and then maybe one more of of the NARS um, but I'm not sure what color like I'm torn between I think brazen is the orangey color and then there's wonderlust which is kind of a purpley um, but it may look a bit too much like the Dolce Vita when I get it on my face um, I don't know so anyway more to come so um, luckily that means that my inbox is is looking a little less less full and I just dropped another brush um, so this is good this makes me feel really nice to be able to say that my inbox is is nearly empty um, there's just some eyeliners and things that are in there um, but hopefully everybody liked that I am really enjoying uh, the new Nomad palette and I will definitely be doing more looks with this so hopefully we can we can go ahead and share those with you when you get when we get there so anyway hope everyone is doing well and we'll see you in the next video whenever it happens so we'll see you then bye, -bye.